Let what will be in the way. Heaven is what he must and will obtain, not if he can without difficulty, but if it be possible. He meets with temptation. The devil is often whispering in his ear, setting allurements before him, magnifying the difficulties of the work he is engaged in, telling him that they are insuperable and that he can never conquer them, and trying all ways in the world to discourage him, but still he presses forward. God has given and maintained such an earnest spirit for heaven that the devil cannot stop him in his course. He is not at leisure to lend an ear to what he has to say. I come now, section 2, to show why the kingdom of heaven should be sought in this manner. It should be thus sought, number 1, on account of the extreme necessity we are in of getting into the kingdom of heaven. We are in a perishing necessity of it. Without it, we are utterly and eternally lost. Out of the kingdom of God is no safety. There is no other hiding place. This is the only city of refuge in which we can be secure from the avenger that pursues all the ungodly. The vengeance of God will pursue, overtake, and eternally destroy them that are not in this kingdom. All that are without this enclosure will be swallowed up in an overflowing, fiery deluge of wrath. They may stand at the door and knock and cry, Lord, Lord, open to us, in vain. They will be thrust back, and God will have no mercy on them, and they shall be eternally left of Him. His fearful vengeance will seize them. The devils will lay hold of them, and all evil come upon them and there will be none to pity or help. Their case will be utterly desperate and infinitely doleful. It will be a gone case with them. All offers of mercy and expressions of divine goodness will be finally withdrawn, and all hope will be lost. God will have no kind of regard to their well-being, will take no care of them to save them from any enemy or any evil, but himself will be their dreadful enemy and will execute wrath with fury and will take vengeance in an inexpressibly dreadful manner. Such as shall be in this case will be lost and undone indeed. They will be sunk down into perdition infinitely below all that we can think. For who knows the power of God's anger and who knows the misery of that poor worm on whom that anger is executed without mercy. Number two, on account of the shortness and uncertainty of the opportunity for getting into this kingdom. When a few days are past, all our opportunity for it will be gone. Our day is limited. God has set our bounds, and we know not where. While persons are out of this kingdom, they are in danger every hour of being overtaken with wrath. We know not how soon we shall get past that line beyond which there is no work device, knowledge, nor wisdom, and therefore we should do what we have to do with our might. Ecclesiastes 9.10 Number 3. On account of the difficulty of getting into the kingdom of God. There are innumerable difficulties in the way, such as few conquer. Most of them that try have not resolution, courage, earnestness, and constancy enough, but they fail, give up, and perish. The difficulties are too many and too great for them that do not violently press forward. They never get along, but stick by the way, are turned aside or turned back and ruined. Matthew 7:14. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Luke 13:24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. Number four, the possibility of obtaining. Though it be attended with so much difficulty, yet it is not a thing impossible. Acts 8.22 If perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. 2 Timothy 2.25 If peradventure God will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. However sinful a person is, and whatever his circumstances are, 
there is, notwithstanding, a possibility of his salvation. He himself is capable of it, and God is able to accomplish it, and has mercy sufficient for it. And there is sufficient provision made through Christ, that God may do it consistent with the honor of his majesty, justice, and truth, so that there is no want either of sufficiency in God or capacity in the sinner in order to this. The greatest and vilest, most blind, dead, hard-hearted sinner living is a subject capable of saving light and grace. Seeing, therefore, there is such necessity of obtaining the kingdom of God in so short a time and such difficulty, and yet such a possibility, it may well induce us to press into it. Jonah 3, 8 and 9. Number 5. It is meet that the kingdom of heaven should be thus sought because of the great excellency of it. We are willing to seek earthly things of trifling value with great diligence and through much difficulty. It therefore certainly becomes us to seek that with great earnestness which is of infinitely greater worth and excellence. And how well may God expect and require it of us that we should seek it in such a manner in order to our obtaining it. Number 6. Such a manner of seeking is needful to prepare persons for the kingdom of God. Such earnestness and thoroughness of endeavors is the ordinary means that God makes use of to bring persons to an acquaintance with themselves, to a sight of their own hearts, to a sense of their own helplessness, and to a despair in their own strength and righteousness. And such engagedness and constancy in seeking the kingdom of heaven prepare the soul to receive it the more joyfully and thankfully, and the more highly to prize and value it when obtained so that it is in mercy to us, as well as for the glory of his own name, that God has appointed such earnest seeking to be the way in which he will bestow the kingdom of heaven.